Hi, I'm Glenn Everett, Master of Machines. Have we got an amazing episode coming up? Mopar fans, this one's for you. Join us as we take a look at some iconic Mopar muscle. A spectacular 70 Dodge Challenger and a big bad and black 68 Dodge Charger. Even better, we get to drive it. Rick, thanks so much for having us here. It's great to see your cars. And it seems you're a bit of a, a Mopar man. Tell us about where that obsession started for you. It all started out in 1988. Uh, we bought a Dodge Phoenix to go to Kansas just for a trip. And uh, that's when I sort of got hooked on Mopars. Came back from the trip and didn't want to sell it. Kept it ever since. In 1992, I saw a Dodge Charger in the flesh and I thought, back then, I'm gonna get one of these cars. That's my dream car. Stumbled across one and uh, my dream came true. Um, it was sort of like a rolling shell at the time. Put it together, took about four years and here it is now on the road. They really are the epitome of bad, the 68 Dodge Charger, especially in black too. Made famous by the movie Bullet. The Dodge Charger to me, especially in black, the triple black, it looks sinister. It just looks like the true bullet car, assassin car. It just looks so evil. Come out of the service station to look at your car and it's just like unbelievable. I just, it spins me out even now, just looking at this car. Like, I own this car, it's yeah, mine. <laughs> I can't believe it, yeah, I, I'm living the dream. <laughs> it doesn't get much better, does it? It doesn't, no. Give us a rundown on that car, what it consists of right now. It's got a 440 engine and uh, it's got a, a work cam in it. It's running a six pack carburetor system on it, eight and three quarter positive traction diff. It's a factory manual, it's all been re-sprayed, the whole car's been virtually a shell up restoration. Rick, tell me what you like best about the 440, the big 440. 440 is just so talky. You get behind the wheel of that thing and you sink your foot into the accelerator and mate, that thing just flies. It's just twisting and, and the whole body is just talking up. What sort of power is she making? Probably around about 550 horsepower, approximately. I noticed the sticker on the back window. What, what does that say? Well, if I'm going to hell, I'm going in a Mopar. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good to me. Yeah, yeah, no, it's really good. Coming up, we drive this epic machine. Well, it appears there's no shortage of epic cars down here, and we've found another Mopar Tragic. We're here with Matt and his killer, 70 Challenger. Matt, it's great to see you. Tell us about your machine. And I thought, you know, I'm sick of just having a Dodge Challenger T-shirt. Why can't you have a car too? 1970 Dodge Challenger, um, California car, 360, marked down from 7.9 to 6.5. And, and I thought, right, beautiful. So I had a VH Charger at the time. I thought, well, you only sell a Charger to buy a Challenger. So I sold that, bought this car for six and a half grand, got it shipped over unseen, and when I first saw it, I went, oh no, I've been ripped off. It was just totally been ratted. The 360 were just sitting in there, left hand drive, seized, drum, it needed full restoration. I thought I was buying something, get it roadworthy and on the road. So the car ambushed me, in a way. Once I got it on the road and you're driving down a sunny day at the Flowerdale, those undulating rolling hills, I find when I'm driving the car, I smile that hard, I've got to put a G clamp across my cheeks to stop my face splitting open. <laughs> now, people at home, if you've got a Dodge Challenger or a Mustang or anything on a big block, you will understand what I mean. Tell us about the engine. It's a big engine. Well, the it? engine, it's got to have a 440. It's got to be the epitome of total decadence and unnecessariness. The engine itself is just under like 440 Magnum specs, which I think were 375 horsepower, 500 foot pound of torque. I've put 440 source heads on, a four barrel bit of a cam balance, so it's about 420 horsepower and 670 newton metres. So what that tells you if, to the layperson is there's that much torque, you don't notice hills. You could drive from here to King Lake, hilliest part of Melbourne, you'd go, was that a hill? <laughs> big blocks, it's a big block share with a 460, they just consume the land like it's not even there. So that's why you're in the Flat Earth Society, is that right? <laughs> yes, well a friend of mine, Andre in Taradale, um, came up with that idea. He said, Matt, we're members of the Flat Earth Society. So we made up some stickers. People come up and go, what's that mean, mate? You're like an anti-progress person or something like that. All it is is when you've got a big block in this or anything else, really, it, it feels like the world's flat. So you're the, driving in a flat earth and they shake their head at you or go, yeah, you're right. The Challenger now, that's the last car I'm gonna do up. And I think once you've done a 70 Challenger with a big block vitamin C, it's like a mountain climber finally got to the top of Mount Everest. There's no more mountains to climb. <laughs> But uh, yeah, there you go. Well, guess 
what I'm doing. I'm ticking a box I've wanted to tick my entire life. Rick's letting me drive his black 68 Dodge Charger. Can you believe it? <laughs> I can't think of anything better. It's the epitome of bad. Ever since I watched the movie Bullet, those bad guys in the black Dodge, I've never forgotten it my entire life. In fact, I watched it so many times the old VHS tape broke in the end. <laughs> All I need now is a black suit, some sweat in the forehead and a worried look on my face looking for Steve McQueen and I'll be right at home in this car. <laughs> to film that nine or 10 minutes of that car chase took something like three weeks. And yes, we saw the Dodge Charger and the Mustang of Steve McQueen's getting airborne. Those cars were punished beyond belief. The black Dodge Charger actually lost more hubcaps than it actually even had on it. <laughs> I'm told that it lost about five, six or seven hubcaps along the way. Quite amazing. This thing goes like a bull at a gate. But it's not your average bull, it's a really, really big bull, a giant bull. A bull that's about as big as a house, a very muscular one. It's that sort of bull. <laughs> The 68 year model was an epic looking piece of machinery. In fact, they sold nearly 100,000 more in that year than they did the previous year model. And you can see why. Just the front of these cars is so menacing, it's so bad. If you saw this thing come up in your rear view mirror, you know, without a doubt, you're in serious trouble. The world is about to end for you, trust me. And no wonder with 440 cubic inches under the hood. We're talking a six-pack carb combo here. They make just under 400 horsepower and a massive amount of stump point torque. With a manual gearbox, it doesn't get much better. They ran a low 13 second quarter mile and they were fast. And you've got to remember back then they were doing that on very thin rubber too. <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> well, we all like a bit of music, don't we? Especially when it comes to engine music. But I can promise you one thing, this car right here doesn't play classical. It plays heavy metal and it devours. Have a listen to this. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Those six pack carbs opening up and devouring all that air. There's just, have a listen to it. Listen to this. I can see why that uh, guy on bullet had a worried look on his face. <laughs> it's a little bit overbearing this thing. It's mean, it's angry, it's tough. She floats around a bit on the road too, but Wow, what a world of power and torque this thing's got. You don't have to rev it up hard because it's such a big, bad engine. But you can hear those six pack carbs pulling in all that air and that growl and that snarl the thing makes. Feels like it's gonna suck you through the firewall. And that's what we want, don't we? <laughs> yeah! Thing with a big 440 she's got so much torque you really don't have to use the gearbox you could have one gear in your gearbox and she'd still pull like a train nothing beats torque and a big bad engine forget the fuel economy though you ain't going to get that <laughs> but do we care no <laughs> you know what a beautiful place it is up here the roads the twisties the hills it's just absolutely magnificent if you're about to drive a black 68 Dodge Charger, up here is just a dream come true for me. Unbelievable. In fact, I can't even believe it's really, really happening. It's a lifetime dream for me. I want to own one of these cars. I want to own one bad. <laughs>